Uh, again, this is from one FSU. If Jordan gets hurt in the LSU game, and he's talking about this year's game, by the way, Jordan gets hurt in the LSU game and is out for the season, and we have good injury luck with the rest of the team for the rest of the season, do you still think we can be ACC champions? I want to say in short, yes, yeah. I think we could. It gets very, very hard, but it is possible. Uh, because I do think this team across the board is going to be better and is very, very good. And I think Clemson continues to slide. And I think that obviously is your chief competitor to win the ACC uh, until somebody else knocks them off the hill. And that game's on the road. Uh, it's going to be a hard game with Jordan Travis. It'll be a really hard game if Jordan Travis isn't playing, as in I don't think we'll win that game but we could win the rematch. And uh, that's the way I would predict an ACC championship to happen, Tom, is if Jordan, in this scenario, if Jordan Travis gets hurt in the LSU game, you're pretty much in shock. Uh, you know, you're, you're fairly devastated. But we, you and I know, the way we would have this conversation is we would talk about, all right, well, now, look, this is not a great schedule. We just have to navigate wins here, here, and here. And we would probably circle the Miami and the Florida game, and we would maybe maybe mention one other that you're worried about. But the Clemson game would be the one that I think almost, and I won't say universally, but the vast majority of Florida State fans on the road, even with a more confident version of Tate Rodemaker, would probably concede that could be very well could be a loss. But I wouldn't concede the rematch. I wouldn't. And and I think because two things would be at play at that point. Uh, that loss would be behind you. You don't have many great games against other teams. Tate would have all of that time to grow between the first matchup and the second. Now, we don't know when that game is going to be played. We will know on Monday coming up. And I'm really looking forward to Monday. Like, I don't want to race through the weekend because I value my weekends, but I'm really excited about Monday for that night for the schedule to come out because when we play that game would also factor in to this conversation. Well, the good news for you is uh, you'll be able to uh, react about that live because you're slated to be on for yeah. the smash on Monday night at seven. What's happening at seven at the same time, the ACC schedule release. So we'll have a, a, a nice couple extra wrinkles for you on Monday night here on War Chant TV. But okay, before I get into the answer to the general question from one FSU, uh, you, you bring up an interesting point about the sequencing of the schedule. And now that there are no divisions, I wonder if it impacts where the ACC would put what it considers to be, at least it has to for this season, the marquee in-season conference matchup, which is yeah. Clemson and Florida State. Do they put it closer to the ACC championship game because they want to maximize what they figure to be two high-ranked teams playing against each other in a high-impact month like November? Or would they rather stuff it in late September and, uh, September and early October to create the narrative of, all right, they're going on separate paths, but they're going to come back to merge right. you know, seven weeks later? I, I find it interesting because you could argue both ways, but the ACC has to do the math in terms of getting it as much exposure as possible. I wonder what the correct answer is for eyes on sets for the conference. My inclination is that you would want to play the first matchup earlier in the season so that you have uh, something that you could point to as a cornerstone matchup right early to set the tone for the ACC conversation and then move it to the end of the year uh, towards the ACC championship game when you get another rematch of high caliber. But you have to think about it that way now as a schedule maker because this is no longer an elimination game in a division. This is the first of potentially two matchups if you're going to get the dream scenario of TV ratings. I agree with you. I, I think... There's a chance they can win the ACC championship. I think there's a really decent chance that they play for the ACC championship if they lost Jordan for the entirety of the ACC slate. Because again, there is no week zero. There is They can't stuff a conference game before LSU. So that would mean that Tate Rodemaker would play the entirety of the ACC slate of games. And the landmines are potentially Miami, the Clemson game on the road, and then I think the Pitt game on the road. We play Pitt up there. Uh, time and circumstance would not matter at that point of the game. That game in a vacuum would just be one of the tougher ones on the schedule. If you can get by Pitt on the road, if you can hammer Miami up here, then all it comes down to is 
don't trip up anywhere else and you're on pace to play Clemson in the ACC championship game for round two. I would say this. If you're looking for potential pitfalls beyond Clemson with a Tate Rodemaker-led Florida State offense, and this is not a shot at Tate, and who knows, he could take the reins and, and tear it up. Who knows? I mean, we don't know. That confidence level may be sky high going into the year after having a measure of success this past year. It's year 52 in the system for him. Correct. So, you know, one would think he's got a pretty good handle on it. But, but Tom, I would circle, because I pulled up the schedule. I know this isn't the order. You're right to point out at Pitt. That's a game that you worry about. But I looked, I just, I try to look at well-coached teams and teams that would maybe have a little something for you to confuse your quarterback. Listen, Duke had the 31st ranked defense in the country last year. Duke had the fifth best defense in the ACC last year. Mike Elko has done an amazing job very quickly at Duke, who was bowl eligible and won eight games. And, you know, listen, again, I don't think Duke is top of the line in terms of talent. But you do see a scenario by which he could confuse him and he could make that game interesting. They made a lot of games interesting, including beating the tar out of Miami. And they beat a lot of teams that they didn't have equal talent to. Yeah. So... I just look for landmines in general when I have high expectations for my team because <laughs> I'm like, well, let's not screw this up. And where could we screw this up? You know, some years you look and you go, well, you could screw up the weight game. They're a good team. You wouldn't say it as much this year. They're losing a ton off that team, including the best quarterback in the league, arguably, right, besides Jordan Travis. Uh, well, May is better than him, but you, you get what I'm saying. But anyhow, I would look at, I would look at that Duke game as, Okay, let's you know that could be a problem. That could be a hiccup without Jordan Travis. Is it at Wallace Wade or here? Uh, that game, I believe, is in fact here. So that helps. I like that a lot. Yeah, that that helps me feel a lot better about it. Duke has some results last year that you have to raise your eyebrows. You have to and say, "Wow, look at that!" I watched. I forget which one it was. Was it Duke Georgia Tech? It was some of the worst quarterbacking I've ever seen in college football, both ends. I was like, my God, this is terrible, terrible product. But look, they got the results. And to me, the way I'd start the argument about Tate and landmines is to look at every other segment group on the offense. And when you do that this year, you smile as you go from position group to position group. Because you can start at running back. Everybody will, I think, in the national media with Trey Benson and, and talk about the impact that he potentially could have this year. At ACC first team. He could be a front runner for the big awards in the ACC if Florida State just decides to run the football. But you look at receiver, we're loaded and we're diverse there. You look at tight end, that is overhauled and something to smile about. And then the question mark is the offensive line about who fits where, but it's not for a lack of options. So you are surrounding a backup quarterback in this hypothetical scenario with as good an offensive situation as you possibly can. You're giving him balance. You're giving him better protection than he had last year, and he had bad protection last year on the road at Louisville when they're down, found a way to make some plays. You're giving him play action as well. So that's the thing. The backup quarterback is surrounded by so much good that as long as they don't you know, tighten up in the moment, Things are going to be wide the hell open. I don't disagree. I, I'm just looking for possible scenarios where an unexpected loss is out there lurking. And, and that Elko-led Duke team uh, is a team on the come. Uh, they're, they're, they're already immensely better. They're well-coached. Uh, I did a segment yesterday, Tom, where one of the things I pointed out that made me laugh was that Elko uh, reached back over to Texas A&M and plucked an up-and-coming linebacker coach off Jimbo's staff who was all too eager to leave Texas A&M to go to Duke. Mm -hmm. Didn't take him long. Funny, the trend that you note with Jimbo's staffers, they leave as soon as they can. The first offer they get, they leave. Yep. Even if it's paid less, they leave. <laughs> and it's not new. That happened here, just the same. That happened here. There was the 1.0 staff. Uh, Coach Stoops left. Oh, yeah. Jeremy Pruitt left in the dead of night. Now, there might have been multiple circumstances there, but I don't think it would have been any different. I think he would have jetted anyway. So, yeah, that, that is a trend that definitely happens with old Jimbo. But the other thing I'd say about Florida State's offense and the quarterback situation, 
I'm assuming Tate's going to be the backup. But if I'm A.J. Duffy and I see all of these weapons that I could work with this year, man, I'm doing everything in my power to make it interesting to take the backup job away from Tate. Because if I could be one play away from playing in this offense with this set of weapons that are oh, yeah, hard, they're going to be gone, most of them, next year. God, what it would do for my career if I could get a crack at playing with these guys. Competition, man. This is the that's the theme for this year. It's competition. It's across the board. We don't think anybody's competing with Jordan Travis to win the starting job, but the competition behind Jordan Travis is going to be intense. And that is true at every position group on the field. It's awesome. 